So about three weeks ago, I went to the sex museum and filmed stuff. And then I went home and wrote a script and recorded audio. And then I didn't edit or post it. Yeah. At first, I thought it was because I felt kind of meh about the video I put out a week before, and I felt like this new video wasn't going to be my best work. But then I realized it was because I was scared. You see, the thesis of the video was that the culture has shifted, and now women can talk about sex within certain constraints. The museum was clearly a feminist space, like even its most straightforward exhibit had commentary on exploring some of its more problematic aspects, and the other big exhibit was literally called The Female Gaze. Most of the patrons were either women or couples. I feel like to some that's unexpected. Like, the gift shop of the museum sells sex toys, and it reminded me of a piece I had read about sex shops and how horribly sexist they are, which I thought was bullshit because I'd been to one before and it was full of women. Can I even show sex toys in a YouTube video? Do I want to admit online that I've been to a sex shop? And the video had this whole thread about sex in the city, and how the show was bad from a lot of lenses, but what was great about it was women talking explicitly about sex. Like, the show popularized the rabbit vibrator. <sighs> Come on, Sappho, you know the majority of your audience is dudes who've never seen sex in the city and don't care about the cultural shift it represents. <sighs> I've always been the type of girl who likes talking about sex, in Sex in the City terms, a Samantha. She was the slutty one. I mean, like, they all liked having sex, but she was the one who talked about it the bluntest of the bunch. Like, Charlotte was the romantic one, and Carrie was also romantic, but really she just liked chaos in her relationships, and Miranda was the sensible one, and I have now lost the 18 to 35 year old male demographic. Please come back. Um, uh, here's some photos of a scantily clad woman. That's, that's what you guys want to see in videos, right? Right? As I was saying, as long as I've been able to conceive of sex, I've liked talking about sex. And I don't just mean... I mean, like, talking about social taboos. I mean, talking about the economic factors that led sex shops to stop catering to men and start catering to women. I mean, talking about why Fifty Shades of Grey is popular. I love talking about sex from ethical and legal perspectives. I love talking about sex from social perspectives. I love talking about sex, which sucks. It really sucks. First of all, because I en end up inadvertently making people feel uncomfortable, which is just not what I'm about. I don't, I don't want to do that. I'm not here to scandalize people. I'm just here to talk about my pet topics. And the other thing is the nasty reactions I get from people. The first of which being people who think that I'm hitting on them. And I, I can understand where that mistake gets made, but I talk about sex with my mother. I talk about sex with my grandmother. Just because I'm talking about what's in your pants doesn't mean I want to get in your pants. The other part is when they slut shame me. And listen, I call myself a slut, but there's this whole laughing at me versus laughing with me thing, and it's just gross and uncomfortable. You'd think that whether or not someone slut shames me correlates with you know them being puritanical or whether or not they're pissed at me that I won't get in their pants, but no, I've been slut shamed by a gay guy who in our memoir class wrote about eating candy off a guy's abs. Basically anyone will do it. So if you open up about sex, you leave yourself open to people being mean to you, or you end up making them uncomfortable, both of which sucks. And if you're a guy, people think you're a creep, which doesn't happen when you're a girl, funnily enough. But at its best, when I open up about sex with other people, they tell me about their experiences and observations. And it's great. 
The internet makes everything different though, because I can't control my audience. Like in person, I'm pretty good at reading the room and choosing who I do and don't want to talk to about sex. But online, I just sort of have to put it out there and hope for the best. And hope that a future employer isn't watching me say, do I want to fuck Max Landis? Oh, I'm so sorry, dad. But there are spaces online which one can bluntly talk about sex. The first being sex education channels, like, for example, Lacey Green, before she took the red pill, and Dr. Doe's explanations. I got to meet her once, she's pretty awesome. There's also queer sex ed channels like Stevie Bobby, and other channels that occasionally have sex ed content like Rowan Ellis and Chase Ross. But all of these channels face demonetization and age restriction. Even Dr. Doe's videos about examining your breasts for lumps are age restricted, and Chase Ross released a video stating that he was afraid YouTube was going to delete his channel for community guideline strikes. This means if you search sex education on YouTube, you don't find these lovely people, and I can't even show you what you do find. This is not great if you're someone like me and many other American teenagers who got the majority of their sex education online. The other place where we find blunt words about sex is, the, is feminist writings online, specifically the, the feminist blogosphere, the majority of which is about rape culture. Now don't get me wrong, we need a lot more said about rape culture. The Me Too movement is probably one of the best things to come out of modern day feminism. But the problem comes when the majority of stuff, certainly not all of it, but the majority is about rape culture. It gives the impression to outsiders that the only thing that feminists care about when it comes to sex is consent. Which, to quote ContraPoints, All consent does is establish that the sex is not rape. And that, Chesterton, is a very low bar to set, both erotically and ethically speaking. So we have this culture where people sex positively talking about sex is restricted. Which raises the question, what do people have access to that talks about sex? Oh boy. Something you notice when you watch commentary channels like Eddie Burback or Danny Gonzalez is that a lot of these popular prank channels and YouTubers like the Paul Brothers that these guys review have sexual content in their videos. Very weird sexual content, like random, gratuitous, scantily clad women and references to a smash room? And these channels are wildly, like, getting millions of views popular and mainly watched by tweens. And it gets worse, because blunt conversations about sex aren't mainstream, it's easier for members of the social right to create false dichotomies, like the one where you're either having meaningless hookups or waiting until marriage to have sex, when there's a lot of different relational options in between those two. It's also easier for people like Jordan Peterson to claim that he's just asking questions when he says women shouldn't wear makeup if they don't want to get sexually harassed, because no one else is asking these questions. While this video seems super dour now, like I'm saying because of a combination of our outrage-focused news cycle and YouTube algorithms, we're creating a culture where sexual objectification and puritanism is more popular than blunt, sex-positive discussions about sex, because that's exactly what I'm saying. It's important to remember that things are shifting for the better. While these conversations aren't happening in the mainstream, save for the occasional sex-positive premium television show, they are happening. And the great thing about the internet is, things don't have to be happening in the mainstream for you to see it. So I'm going to leave a list of things in the description that I like the way they talk about sex, and if you have things you feel similar about that aren't on my list, comment them so a i can consume them and b i can add them to the list let's talk about sex baby hey thanks for watching um special thanks to my patrons of course uh if you're interested in the video that this was like three weeks ago that i decided not to make it is one of the selections in the outtakes from last month so if you give as little as two dollars a month to my patreon um you can have access to that uh, don't ask me why those photos of that woman were taken. I do not know. I found the images on Google Image Search. Uh, never before have I seen the image of a woman more like a sim. I, I'm just completely fascinated by it. All right.
Um, see you next time.